Hello, my name is John Sayer, Technical Marketing Manager, Civil Infrastructure here at Autodesk. Today I would like to take you through part 404 of our VR creation using the AEC Collection series. VR Level 1, Drone to VR. When I say Drone to VR, I mean gathering existing conditions and pushing them into a virtual reality environment. You can also use it to monitor a construction site. So let's get started. At the end of part three of four, we were here in 3ds Max, and what we had done is we had dropped in a script file to actually rename all of our textures so that we didn't have to do that whenever we started to push things to 3ds Max Interactive. So what we need to do now is we need to go ahead and start up 3ds Max Interactive. All right, so I've already done that. Whenever we open 3ds Max Interactive, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start a new project with a template. All right, so there's templates here that are out of the box, and you can you can just look here on the screen. You can they're kind of self-explanatory, um, but the template that we're going to use today is the HTC Vive template. All right, so it's going to create a project for me that has all of the HTC Vive settings. That's the VR device that we're going to use. So I'm going to go ahead and select that, and I'll hit create. All right. So we're going to go ahead and give it a project location. Again, I'm going to I'm going to browse out to my location that we've been building upon. All right. So I'll go to projects 2018 here and we will just say make new folder and we'll call that folder 3DS. Whoops. 3DS Max Interactive. All right. We'll go ahead and place it in that folder. Hit okay. And we will just call this, uh, call it what it is, in dot. And hit create. Now, it's going to go through and create that project using the HTC Vive settings. All right, now, once the, there we go, let me go ahead and bring that up there so you can see it. It does take just a little bit, maybe two or three minutes for it to create the project. Don't think that that's your machine uh, not working in the background, it is. It's just loading up all of the default information and compiling all the default data and building all of the folder systems underneath that, that folder that we just built for the 3DS Max Interactive file. All right, so once everything comes in and the defaults all are set up and our project system and everything's set up, there's a couple things we need to do before we start to push the information from 3DS Max into 3DS Max Interactive. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new level. So this, this initial scene that you see here, or this level viewport that you see, um, you do not want to push anything to this level. You, you have to create a new level for our information to come in. We're going to talk about navigation a little bit too. Um, it is a, a different way of navigating. Uh, the, I'm going to show you a good way to do it. So let's just, let's just go ahead and create a new level. So we're going to go to File, a new level. All right. Now what we need to do is save that level, all right? And we're going to need to remember this because we've got a couple of files that we need to modify here later on in this episode. So we're going to go to File. We're going to save this level. Keep it something simple. Um, we definitely need to make sure that we put this in the right folder, so be sure that you double-click on Content and then select Levels. And you can see that VR Learning level. That was the level with the room. So just go ahead and give it a name. So we're just going to call this in, in particular, we're just going to call it in dot. All right. Again, keep it something simple because we're going to modify a file later with that name. So we'll hit save. And we are now ready to push information from 3DS Max to 3DS Max Interactive. All right. So let's pop back over to 3DS Max. And I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. All right. I'm going to select everything here. I'm going to go up to my interactive tab that I've got at the top, um, and I'm going to go ahead and select Level Send All. All right. Now what it's going to do is it's going to give me a dialog box, and everything that's checked here, you can just leave this default. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit Send. Now there's a Send and Close, but I like to be able to uh, see it after it's sent everything and, and not automatically close this. And what it's going to do is it's going to push this information to 3ds Max Interactive, and then it's going to compile all that information. All right. 
So let's go ahead and hit send. And your screen's going to start blinking quite a bit. So it's sending all of these textures, all of this information that we have in the 3ds Max file directly over to 3ds Max Interactive. Now this, according to how big your uh, your your files that you brought into 3ds Max, it could take it a little bit longer. It should take it about two or three minutes here, and it should have everything exported over and start to compile that data inside of 3ds Max Interactive. So again, you can just kind of take a step back for a couple minutes, and this process is a little bit longer. You know, the bigger the amount of it, or I say the bigger the amount of information, the more information that you have, it's going to take it just a little bit longer to push that to Max Interactive. It's not monumental, though. It doesn't take that much longer. All right, so it's already done here, and I um, can see my dialog box uh, that I, it, it didn't go ahead and close the send level dialog. So I can go ahead and see that I'm done. I can hit cancel. All right, and I can see here that now in 3ds Max Interactive, I am importing files. And it's doing this all on its own It's uh, since we sent the level from 3ds Max to 3ds Max Interactive. So it'll take it, uh, again, maybe a couple minutes to import and compile all of this information. And then we're actually very shortly going to be able to go ahead and deploy our VR experience. There's a couple more steps that we'll have to take. We've got to set up some control for our teleporting. Um, we also have to tell it what level to automatically open up whenever we execute the VR experience. So those are the things that we'll be modifying after everything comes in. All right, so now that we've got it imported and all the data is compiled, one thing I want to kind of talk about a little bit before we start to find our model, and I'll show you an easy way to find your model, is if you want to add and make your UI look kind of like what mine does on the screen, all I've done here is, is hit the plus sign next to one of my menus, and or one of my tabs, and I can add any of these tabs to my screen. So I'm going to definitely be in my Explore tab and my Create tab, because we're going to create a player start from that tab. and I want my deployer up, so I've actually added those to my UI so that I don't have to hunt and peck for them. All right, so how do I find my information? Because all the data came in, but I can't see anything. So if I go to my Explorer tab and I just select one of these units and I hit my F key, all right, and you might have to do it a couple times, but if you hit your F key here, it will take you to your model. Now, if I press my wheel mouse down, let's talk about navigation a little bit. If I press my wheel mouse down, it does move the model up and down like this. If I hold my right click down, it's going to spin the model 360 degrees. All right. But it's a little bit, uh, not, not necessarily slow to respond, but it doesn't react the same as uh, it does like in the InfraWorks. So you do want to use that F key quite a bit uh, just to kind of move around. So if I, once I see my model, I can select any piece of it and hit F and it will zoom to it. Okay. Now again, this black area that's around the outside, don't worry about that because that's that's the area where it was merging into the Bing imagery. So we're concerned with everything here inside of this area, so that's where we're going to be jumping around. We're not worried about the, the black area because it, it doesn't make any difference in this particular um, VR. All right, so I'm going to actually spin this thing around 360 degrees. All right, and then I'll hit F again, and it should bring me to my location. So the reason I'm doing this is because I have a particular spot that I want to start my VR experience. All right, so I'll zoom back, and I'll move around a little bit, and I'll hit F. All right, so I'm getting back to my location. This area right here is where we actually... Uh, stood when we flew the site so I can I can move back let me click over here and hit F then I can pan over so I want my player start to be right here where the, we were standing all right so now I could go ahead and set my player start location but there's one thing I want to do before I do that all right and I'm going to actually st set up what's called static physics all right now you have to do this in order to be able to to teleport around so in order to do that, we're going to take these steps. So if we look over here in our asset browser, we'll see the in.folder that it created. 
All right, so we're going to go to content, drop down to models, and you're going to see that end dot model. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit the plus sign there and just select end dot. All right, and you can see all of the units. This is what we need to set our static physics to. So if I select the first unit there and I scroll all the way down and hit my, or actually just mass select all of these, these units, I can then right click and tell it that I want to enable static physics. So I select that. Now, once you select it, just select it and, and, and hold on a second because right here is where you're going to see that it starts to compile that data and it starts to add those static physics. Now, don't do like I did the first couple times and click on it and not see it, you know, start to create those static physics real fast. It does take it just a second to kick off. Once it kicks off, it doesn't take that long to compile. My point to that is, is that don't start clicking around because what will happen is, is you'll lose track of what you're setting uh, your static physics to. So just click on it, right click and hit enable static physics and it'll take just a second to configure. And you see there, it's done. All right. So now we'll take the next step. Now I can go ahead, or now I'm going to go ahead and set my um, player start, all right? So I always go back and minimize everything back up in my asset browser so I know where I'm at. So I'm just gonna click in my model here and I'm gonna zoom up. I'm gonna set my player start right here. So I would go up to my create tab that I've added to my UI and I'll, I'll click player start. Now, again, you wanna be careful all right, because if you click twice, you're going to set two player starts. So I'm just going to click once, and then I'm going to hit escape, and then I'm going to pick up here in the sky, so it'll deselect it. Now, this player start can be zoomed to also, if you click on that and hit F, it takes you down to that player start. So you can see, you know, very easily that that is where I'm going to start whenever the VR experience loads. Just be careful, like I said, and don't add two player starts. Now let's take that next step. We're going to modify a file called the project.lua file. So it's a project.lua file. All right, and that's where we're going to set our default level. Whenever we start the VR, all right, it needs to know what level to come in at. So we're going to find that project.lua file. If you just go into the search area here and hit project.lua, L-U-A, and we'll do a quick search and it'll bring it in. So when you see that file, just select it, right click and hit open. And it does open it pretty quick. And people start to get a little nervous whenever they say they see this script file. Don't worry about it. We're just going to we're just going to set one thing. And it's right here at line 12. We need to take off the VR learning. All right, backspace that out and just type in in dot. All right? That's the level that we created and saved. So we just basically Backspace that out and hit save, all right? And then we can close it. Now, I do want to clear my search. So if I click in here, or actually if I go here in my asset browser and I hit search results, I can hit clear search results and it comes back and shows me all my information like I want. All right, now we need to modify our functionality for teleporting in our, in our teleporting flow editor. All right, so this is really the last step before we hit and, and deploy this VR. So we're going to go here to in our in our asset browser, down underneath our project named a VR Steam. Hit plus and then then go to models, and you'll see functionality teleport. All right, that flow editor is right here. Functionality teleport flow editor. So if I select it, right click and hit open, then the flow editor will come up. And again, people start to get a little nervous if they've not built these. Uh, VR sessions, uh, they, they get a little nervous whenever they see this flow editor because you're basically linking things together to tell it, you know, how to how to react inside of the VR environment. Now, where we need to modify things is right here in the center. So we need to go to check normal for spawn location. And you'll see that there's an equal, all right, uh, a dialog box or a box there that we, that's what we're going to delete. Now, what it's telling you here is that anything that is equal to 1% of grade, it's going to allow us to teleport on. Well, as you know, in a lot of projects, that, that's not going to work, all right? And there's, there's not going to be an even 1% even grade uh, throughout the entire project, so we wouldn't be able to teleport around. So we're going to simply zoom in. We'll select this box and just hit our delete button, all right? 
Now inside this box, we're going to create a new math equation. All right, so we're going to right click and go down to math and go to numeric and do a greater than or equal math equation. All right, and we'll move this back in the middle. Once this is in there, go ahead and select in the B area where it says B and put in 0 0.5. I want it to do anything a half percent or I want to be able I say anything. I want to be able to teleport around on anything a half percent or greater. All right. That's going to cover us pretty much. Then all I have to do is just link things together. So the Z in vector components will link to A and I'll move this down so it gives us that nice squiggly line and then the value button here for this dialog goes to bool. All right. Now, now we'll be able to teleport wherever we want on our site. So after that's done, we simply save our flow editor and then we can close it. All right. Now I want to go ahead and save my, my, uh, my file here in 3ds max interactive. So I'm going to hit save level. And then I'll go back and I'll, I'll go ahead and hit save all. And it saves all and, and now we're ready to actually deploy our VR experience. Now, the VR experience that we're going to deploy is just going to be one for uh, Microsoft Windows. All right, that's going to work for us uh, whenever we uh, double click on it in Windows. So I'm going to set my destination folder. And again, this is the project system that we've been building on throughout this series. So I'm going to go to PC. Go down here to my D drive, projects, VR, and I'm going to build another folder. All right, and I'm going to call it deployment. All right. And I'll, I'll do the same thing I've been doing. I'll select another file or another folder, and then I'll select that deployment folder again, just so that I'm sure that it's putting it there. The configuration type, you can use either one of these. I always use release. All right. Uh, it's just personal preference, but you're, you're able to actually look at these. Uh, you'll, you'll be able to use the VR regardless of whether it is a de development uh, configuration or release. I just always use release. And then I'm going to give it a name. So I'm just going to call this um, in dot. And we'll call it, yeah, we'll just call it in dot. All right. And the last thing we do is hit package project for Windows. All right. So I'll hit that. And it does take it a couple minutes to build the VR deployment. Now, once the VR deployment is built, you can see here in Windows Explorer that under the deployment folder, you'll have a Win64 folder, and then you'll have a release folder, and you'll see that N. application. So you can double click on that whenever it gets onto the VR machine, and it'll go ahead and launch the VR, and we'll be able to utilize it with the HTC Vive. So what we'll do is go ahead and copy this onto a flash drive and I'll transfer it over to my VR machine. So once we're on the VR machine here, I've copied that same deployment folder onto my desktop. And as you can see, it's got the same Win64 and release folders. And we've got our n.exe file that we will double click on and launch our VR experience. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch the VR experience and you'll see it come up here in just a second. Now, once the VR has started, I can see that I am actually starting where I set my player start. Uh, if I look here at the cars, those are the, those are the cars, the vehicles where we were standing. You can also see the controllers in my hand and we can start to teleport around a little bit and start to take a look at some different things inside of the VR. And you can see that we are teleporting correctly. Um, you can see if you if you select on the HTC Vive uh, controller on that little disc there that you just press the bottom of that and we are able to teleport around. So we can teleport up onto the bridge. We can take a look at um, any of the design decisions that we want to make on the bridge, if we had any, um, so on and so forth. So we could also uh, teleport down off the back of the bridge here and we had a little bit of an example if we turn around and look. We can see that there's some some dirt that's fallen away from the bridge. Uh, maybe that's a, a, a problem that we're trying to, to talk about or bring to everybody's attention. But you can see here from the rich environment of just the drone photos 
that being able to teleport around inside and have the VR and be inside of this experience is, it, it's, uh, they say a picture's worth a thousand words. I, I don't know how to qualify this uh, as to how many words that we're actually uh, covering here, but it is just like you're standing there on the screen. Now, it's going to be a little bit different, you know, me videoing this and recording the video of it, of me being in the environment. It even looks better whenever you have the goggles on. So I, d I definitely wanted to be sure that everybody understood that too. So I hope this series of videos uh, actually helps you to understand how we can take and use the AEC collection and we can go from drone photogrammetry to a VR experience very, very quickly. And if you've never put the goggles on, if you've never had the goggles on, the HTC Vive goggles, um, you don't really understand uh, VR until you put them on. So I would highly recommend that you do put them on and, and take a look at it. Your, your customers will not understand it fully until they put it on. Um, it's just a, it's an immersive experience that it's hard to explain um, until they actually put those goggles on. So I hope this helps to understand how to build those experiences. And I thank you for watching this series of videos. And if you've got any questions, you're more than welcome to shoot me an email. We can chat about it. Thanks and have a great day.